Okay, here we're going to talk about Carnot cycles. And the Carnot cycle uh, is a reversible cycle. It's kind of the best case cycle. And it consists of four processes, two adiabatic processes where there's no heat transfer, and two isothermal processes from uh, uh, one of those thermal reservoirs that we've been talking about. Um, and and th those alternate. So it goes adiabatic, isothermal, adiabatic, isothermal. Okay, and then the performance really only depends on those isothermal temperatures that the, the process is occurring. So again, it, here's a, a vapor power cycle, right? So we've got our hot reservoir and our cold reservoir. We've got this cycle in between there. And again, the Carnot cycle is the best case scenario. So again, the, the best thermal efficiency is going to be one minus the, the temperature ratio of the, um, the two reservoirs. Okay, um, now process one to two is turbine. That's an adiabatic process, right? There's no heat transfer in the turbine. There's only work output. And then it goes through the condenser, which is going to be that isothermal process where it dumps heat into a cold reservoir. Then it goes through another adiabatic process, the pump, to bring it back up to a pressure to put it through an isothermal uh, Q-in process at the boiler at, at T-hot. Okay, so again, pump and turbine or adiabatic condenser and boiler are isothermal and it goes back and forth between those and again the temperatures of the boiler and the condenser are what define the um, process again this is the best case scenario reverse reversible cycle now i can also have a refrigeration or a heat pump and we've discussed that as well basically it's just the it's just flipping the the direction of the cycle so i start through an adiabatic compressor then i go through a isothermal condenser, then an adiabatic turbine, then a, an isothermal uh, evaporator. Okay, and again, it's a heat pump. If we're interested, what we're trying to get out is, you know, we're trying to heat a warm region. It's a refrigerator. If what we're trying to do is cool uh, a, a colder region. Okay, so it's the same cycle schematically. It just depends on if we're looking for the hot space or the cold space that we're trying to heat or cool, okay? But again, it goes for a Carnot cycle, best case scenario here, depends only on those condenser and evaporator temperatures, okay? And those condenser and evaporator, those are isothermal temperatures, so there's no constant temperature during that process. And then the compressor and turbine are both adiabatic. There's no heat transfer. So again, I go back and forth between isothermal and adiabatic. Best case scenario, reversible cycle between two reservoirs. Now, for a closed system, it looks a little bit different, not like how we had been talking with the thermal reservoirs when we were talking about the Kelvin-Planck statement. Uh, but again, it's the same process. I go back and forth between adiabatic and isothermal, adiabatic, isothermal, right? So for a power cycle, again, those uh, isothermal reservoirs uh, are all that determine the the n max but again you know i could do an adiabatic compression isothermal expansion adiabatic expansion isothermal compression so again i'm going back and forth back and forth okay um so that's what a carnot cycle is and and really the, the main thing to, to remember is it's the best case scenario so again using those um you know maximum performance based on temperature that we had talked about and then that the fact that it goes it, you just remember it goes back and forth between adiabatic and isothermal adiabatic and isothermal 